what is this big old book you say? This is my sewing journal. And so was this one before it, and this one before that, this one kind of at the same time, and these ones a little bit too. Let's talk about why I'm a huge fan of keeping a sewing journal and why it's important to my sewing process and how it helps me build my sewing skills over time. I sew a lot, a lot, a lot, and a huge part of my wardrobe is handmade vintage. I also sew a lot of patterns multiple times. I'm a big fan of finding a pattern that I love and coming up with a lot of variations for it. I occasionally go very rogue from a pattern, drafting entirely different features or Frankensteining different patterns together, like the blouse I'm wearing. Which started off life as a vintage pattern which looked essentially like I was wearing a pillowcase with ruched shoulders and a v-neck hole cut out for the head when I did the muslin, so I completely drafted this myself. And I've made two versions of this blouse and even turned it into a bodice for a dress and made two of that too. And you know how you'll say, I'll remember how I did that? No, no, not if you're me. There's no way I would remember exactly how I constructed the shoulders of this four years ago, or what length of a skirt I used for a particular dress that I really like, or where I read about some esoteric technique so that I can use it again for a future project. It's absolutely invaluable for me to be a good record keeper when I'm sewing and be able to look back on that information in the future. So I keep track of almost everything I sew in a notebook. This guy. I personally love a big notebook. I find it easier to write in, and that might be in part because I'm a lefty, so my hand doesn't run along the spine as much when I'm writing, but I can also fit a lot in too. I started off sewing with a cheap spiral bound notebook, but I wanted it to be a nicer experience, and I love fountain pens, and so I dedicated a fountain pen to a journal with really nice paper, and it makes me happier to sit down and write in it, so I'm more inclined to do it. I should stop for a minute and say I am a fan of digital note taking, but I like keeping my sewing notes in a physical notebook. I do keep my knitwear design notes on an iPad, since those are more like scribbles and drawings, inserting photos and things that I want to erase a lot, and that works better for me digitally. Plus it can be more mobile, which I need for knitting, but I don't need that for sewing. So both are great for different reasons. There are a couple of key pieces of information that I make note of for every sewing project in my notebook, but the rest is pretty much a free for all in terms of what I feel is important to write down at the time and remember later. Let's take a look inside. <laughs> this is not my current one. <laughs> this one is. Let's look inside that. Oh look, it's a blank page. Oh, that's good. So this is my current notebook and I am this far into it. You can see all of these projects that I've documented and this notebook goes all the way back to the beginning of 2019. A few things that I try and keep track of for every project and I am not great at doing this for all of them, but I always note the pattern name and the date and then I try to remember to put a swatch of the fabric and the yardage. Sometimes I'll make note of where I got it from or if it's vintage fabric. So you can see this is a coat that I did and here's a little swatch of my lovely wool coating. This was a vintage fabric that I used for this particular dress. So let's look at the page for the red top that I am wearing. I made this in 2019 and this was actually the second version that I made of this kind of hacked together self-drafted, if you will, top that started off life as a vintage pattern, as I mentioned. And I wrote out the plan, my idea how I was going to do this, notes about my muslin, and then construction tips like how I did the ties and how I did the shoulders. And all of this is info that then I was able to use next month when I made the red version. Here's another project that required two pages again. This was a vintage wrap dress. And I did a muslin, there was a whole saga with that, and wrote out some notes about what I wanted to do, and then some construction notes about like how I bound the neck, and then what part of the vintage pattern that I actually ignored, how I did the pockets, things like that. But not all the pages are that explicit. Sometimes you get pages like this, <laughs> where I just wrote what pattern I used, what fabric I used with my little swatch, and that it was my birthday dress. That's it. Here are some examples of notes I took that end up being useful to me over time. This was a dress that I sewed and I made note that I did a small front gaping neckline adjustment and I noted that I got it from the Cashmere blog. 
This is a vintage 50s fleece top that I made. In fact, I wore it briefly in my first vlog video. I love this top and in fact, I plan to sew another version in the future. I've made a few different versions in different fabrics. And for this one, I made note at the time that I thought maybe in a future version, I should stabilize the hemline because I thought it was a little bit wavy. But then I came back at a later date after wearing it a bunch and decided, no, it's actually totally fine. So it's important that I leave notes like that for myself because I usually look back at a project if I'm planning on sewing it again and see what notes I had for myself. So that's a good one. <laughs> this one's kind of a funny note, but this is a reproduction cross neck halter top that I made in a Lurex blend fabric. <laughs> and my note is actually that this fabric was really scratchy and it gave me a rash on my neck at Biva. So that's a good note because if I ever want to use this fabric again, I should make sure it's a project that doesn't rub against my neck. And here's an example of a construction note that I left for myself. I sewed the Charm Patterns Hepburn top and I just struggled a little bit with how the instructions were for the center back neckline. And so I wrote out what I actually did instead so that if I sewed this again, I'd be able to do the same thing again and remember it, which in fact I did in my very next project when I took the Hepburn and Gable top and mash them up together. And then in this case, I didn't need to leave the same note because I had already left it in the previous project, but I did mark down the seam order that I sewed this in since I was merging two patterns together. And I like to leave myself little notes like that so that if I decide I wanna do something like that in the future, I can go back and remember how I did it. This one has a random piece of tissue that I wrote some notes on and there was another one in here where I wrote notes on a grocery notebook piece of paper and then just stuck it in. Uh, mm, your guess is as good as mine. This is actually the page for one of the dresses that I made after creating the bodice for the blouse that I'm wearing. And this page has one of the most helpful notes of all because I know that this is a mashup that I did, but I wrote where the pattern pieces are and I don't always do that when I mash up things together and then I'm left trying to figure out what envelope I put them in. So go me from 2020. So this pink notebook is actually the same notebook, but just a thinner version. And this is my lingerie specific notebook. And yes, I have a pink fountain pen ink dedicated to this notebook. But in the beginning of this, I actually did something a little bit different. I wrote out all of my instructions for assembling a bra because I don't do it that often. And as you can see, there's a lot of steps and a lot going on. And so I didn't really want to forget. So I documented all that. And then there's not as many pages in here, but I just kind of document most of the bras that I've made and underwear as well in this specific notebook. I don't know, I just, it's kind of fun having a separate notebook just for that. So here's something I do for really intense projects or projects where I just want to be a little looser about writing things down before I commit them to my notebook. I basically pre-journal, if you will. Very low stakes with a pencil and a yellow notebook. So I'll just use this to be kind of sloppy about things and make notes as I go before I want to commit them to my real notebook. And particularly for really labor intensive projects like coats, I'll sometimes use this to make notes to kind of keep me on track. So I wrote down all the pattern pieces and what was lining and what was not lining for this particular coat that I made just to kind of keep myself in order when I was sewing this. Don't think I'm perfect at this, by the way. If I'm working on something easier and I don't really feel like tracking it at the time, it probably means I'll end up with a page that has the pattern name and a little swatch of the fabric and a big old not much. And so the last things I have documented in my current sewing journal is two projects from November. And then we get into all these pages where I just have my swatch. Very good of me to remember to put my swatch in there so I can remember what the project is. Not so good to not have the notes and have to backtrack on documenting these like three, four, five, six months later. So I gotta do that. Here's the thing, even if you're not like me and you tend to follow patterns as they're written and maybe don't often repeat patterns even, it can still be great to keep a sewing journal. It's so fun to look back at my projects and see what I've accomplished. And sometimes it can be inspiring for future projects too. Plus you never know when some of that information may come in handy for a future project. My sewing journals are a great reminder of how much I love sewing and how far I've come. And I go back to look at these details all the time on past projects. So for me, I think it helps hone my skills over time because I'm able to look back at past tips like construction methods or how I approach drafting something, what stitch length I used, you name it. 
and it all helps me with new projects over time. So if you sew and you're looking for a way to be more organized or maybe even more motivated, I highly recommend keeping a sewing journal, whether a physical book or a digital one. What do you think? Do you document your sewing projects? Let me know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'm gonna go fill in those few blank pages right now. Bye. <laughs>